Hey folks, here are OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the AJAZZ AJ33. This is a portable mechanical keyboard that has a detachable micro USB cable and it sells for under 50 bucks, which is also pretty low cost. It is a fully backlit RGB programmable keyboard that has an array of backlight patterns that you can cycle through, which is pretty cool. And it uses blue switches, which seems to be the most common type for uh, mechanical keyboards these days, which I don't have a problem with at all because I personally like the sound as well as the overall feedback that you get from typing on them. So this is the packaging, it's pretty simple, there's a kind of a sticker that you can scratch if to verify that it's genuine, and on the back it just has some very basic information. This is an 82 key uh, keyboard, so it's not quite as large as, you know, 104 keys. It gets rid of the num key uh, in lieu of portability. It's a plug and play keyboard, so it's going to work with any Mac, Linux, or Windows computer computer, and the packaging is kind of interesting. There's a second box inside the outer box, so there's, a bit of, there's been a bit of care and attention here uh, that says geek on it. Let's open this up, and we have the keyboard on the inside along with the aforementioned detachable micro USB cable, which is used for data. What's also interesting is I give you this uh, wood brush, which is used to remove any dust, and there's also an additional cap that you can use to remove the uh, individual keys if you want to wash them or switch them for a different style. It comes by default with traditional square keys, but there's another model that's available that comes with round keys if you like the retro typewriter style, which is getting pretty popular recently. Here's the keyboard itself, we'll take a closer look in a second. There is a protective kind of a sheet on the bottom which we can peel back. And we can see that it does come with this a very shiny and glossy piano black reflective surface, which uh, I think it looks pretty sleek. Considering that this is quite low cost, uh, it does definitely feel more expensive than the price would suggest. But the base here isn't made out of uh, aluminum or metal. There are also these uh, kind of caps that I can flip up to have the keyboard type at an elevated angle, and there's also soft touch rubber accents that prevent it from sliding around on a surface or a desk. Um, there's also the quick start guide, which documents how to set up the various uh, lighting modes, and this is the keycap remover. All right, so going back to the design of the keyboard, now looking at the front, you can see that indeed this is a very portable unit because there are almost no bezels on the sides, and as a result, it makes it quite portable, um, or if you want something very minimalistic on your desk uh, to have a very clean overall look, then this could be an option to consider. Overall, it's actually quite lightweight. The frame itself, or at least the base here, does come with a kind of sheet of aluminum, so you do have some chamfered edges and some durability, although the base on the very back here again is a, a made out of plastic. Um, you do have some custom kind of logos embedded on the spacebar from A Jazz, and all the other keys seem fairly traditional as far as their layout and some of them double as media controls on the top when you tap on the function key and hold it down. Things like adjusting the volume, changing the screen brightness can be accessed using those keys. Uh, the buttons themselves have a very interesting kind of texture to them. It's not completely in a matte, there's a bit of resistance. From the side we can notice two things. First of all, the brightness of the backlight is actually pretty strong and it remains visible even at various angles and even if there's a bit of lighting in the room you can still see it pretty well. Furthermore, you really get a sense of the ergonomics. These keys aren't just your standard ones you get from you know, any typical keyboard. Uh, you can see they get progressively more narrow towards the center and then they get taller and wider towards the edges. So it dips in at the center and that is kind of uh, the most optimal position that you would use for typing. We can see that the mi mini USB uh, port is located on the left hand edge, which I like. It's not perfectly centered, so it doesn't interfere quite as much when you're placing it on a desk. And this is the default lighting mode when you first plug it in. Um, it powers on almost instantly. Again, no drivers are needed, and again, that has a very soft kind of fading effect, a rainbow color that cycles between all the individual keys. Because there are, they are using a relatively reflective metal base, um, it illuminates the lighting actually quite well, and uh, again, makes it a pretty dazzling piece, especially in a darkened environment. If you want to change things like the brightness as well as the animations, which there are quite a few to select from, you can tap on function and F8. So uh, the function key is on the top right hand corner, as you can see here and some of these keys have been uh, shrunk, shrunken down in a way because they don't have quite as much size as a full 104 uh, key uh, layout. But if you tap on function and F8, it goes to a uh, slightly cooler kind of a uh, 
temperature and uh, more of a one color change between each of the modes. Tapping on F8 again goes into, again, another rainbow one, but it seems to oscillate on the uh, edges of the keyboard. Tapping on it once more, and we are now at a very soft kind of a fading mode before it goes through all the colors much more slowly. F8 once more, and now we have, um, again, a very soft, slow fade that kind of goes back and forth and pulses. F8 once more, and now we have what seems like just individual colors, so I can cycle between them and customize the colors. F8 once more, this is now the memory mode where I can tap on the individual keys, and you can see that they will light up as I type on them. It's not the most practical if you're in a completely dark environment and you want to see the keys, but it works more better as kind of a novelty conversation starter. Uh, what's interesting is that each time that you tap on the keys, again, the colors change, so it's not static, it's continuously changing. Function F8 once more, and now we have a kind of ripple effect where I can tap on one key and then the entire pulse goes outwards, which is pretty colorful. Function F8 again, now it's the same pulse effect but only for a row and no longer in a circle. Function F8 once more, and now we are in this kind of random fill up mode where the keys will again, change colors uh, you know, without any sequential order individually. And you can see that the A Jazz logo is also lit up pretty well. And then function F8 once more goes into more of a static kind of a candy mode, I like to say, because all the keys look very colorful and there's not too much changes going on here. At least it's very minimal. Function F8 once more, and we are at a kind of a static mode where nothing is changing at all, but it has a rainbow color. Function F8 once more, another kind of ripple or wave. Again, there's another kind of animation that uh, is better for demonstration purposes probably than actual use. Function F8 once more. A quicker kind of random fill up. Function F8 again. Kind of a side scrolling bar. Function F8 once more. Goes into kind of a pale one color mode. And function color once more goes back into the original uh, kind of mode that we saw before. Um, so again, there are quite a few different colors that you can program and go through. So next, if we go into a bit more about the performance of the keyboard itself, um, again, even though it's shrunken down in terms of the bezel size, it still is a full-size keyboard. So no issues at all as far as the overall key sizes when you're typing along. Um, it takes very little time to get used to it. And I got a comfortable kind of words per minute, which is about average for me, after just using it for about one to two minutes, there's no real problems there. You do have all the advantages of a full mechanical keyboard, so the switches kind of does the work for you, and that means you only have to exert half the pressure that you would usually use on a membrane style keyboard on a laptop. So just tapping on it very lightly, the key goes all the way down by itself. Um, with mechanical switches, it also will last you a lot longer than traditional membrane switches. So this thing will last you for hopefully you know, 10 years down the road, uh, which makes a lot of sense if you are someone who does a lot of typing, a lot of writing, gaming, or programming, then again, this is a good investment option uh, in general. Otherwise, if we do a little bit of a sound test, if you want to know how loud kind of the blue switches are, even though they are pretty typical by now, I'll try typing out something kind of very quickly so that you get a better idea. So again, that is what the sound is like. Um, it's pretty crisp and tactile. It's not quite as uh, sharp in terms of its sound as uh, some other versions that I've seen recently, but overall the sound itself uh, does give you kind of another audible confirmation that the keys are being tapped on and can potentially improve the accuracy of your work. Um, it's a good all-rounder keyboard, especially if portability and simplicity is what you need. If you're into lots of data entry or number processing and you have to use a dedicated numpad, then this might not be the best option just because of its small or kind of overall size, but personally I think that it looks nice and also fits well onto most desk surfaces, um, so it's a great piece for most setups. Um, furthermore, uh, I would say that uh, overall the sensation of the keys, the overall experience that you get from typing on it is very good, and the accuracy that you can reach is also quite high with these. Um, some things that uh, I would say maybe they could work on in a future generation would be considering adding Bluetooth, since the 33 series is already going to be the, one of the more portable models on the market. It makes sense that you would want to carry it around and having 
having a wireless option in addition to having the ability to plug in a wire could enhance the overall use. Uh, but overall, again, I think that this is a pretty good keyboard, especially at this low price. You can check out more details on our official written review, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the AJAZZ AJ33 Series Mechanical Keyboard.